Hello again, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed learning about Alabama last week. This week we're going to learn a little bit about Alaska. Uh, let's jump right in, really. No reason beating around the bush. So this is a map of, uh, of Alaska. Um, doesn't have anything marked on it, but this is basically Alaska here. Uh, you have the lighter area, that's Alaska. This section right here is Canada, and this section over here is uh, Russia. Uh, in fact, <clears throat> it is only 50 miles from Alaska to Russia, if you could drive there in a car. Uh, you could get there actually pretty quickly from uh, Alaska to, uh, to Russia. Originally, <clears throat> the Russians were the ones who claimed Alaska, and the United States bought Alaska from the Russians. Uh, it cost $7.2 million to buy uh, Alaska from the Russians. I'm uh, trying to see. I, I had it pulled up at one point. Um, 1867. So uh, in 1867, uh, the United States bought Alaska from Russia. It was called Seward's Folly at the time because nobody thought that there was anything in Alaska that was worth the purchase of that amount of, of uh, land. The thing is, is that, um, just, we'll go through some Alaska facts real quick. January 3rd, uh, 1959, that is when Alaska was officially uh, made a state of the United States and it became the 49th state to be admitted to the Union. Um, Relatively recently, uh, I actually met a guy who, um, I, he's, he has probably passed away because I met him when I was doing my undergraduate degree, um, and I finished that <clears throat> 2000, early 2000s, I, I don't recall the exact year off the top of my head, um, but um, I finished my bachelor's degree, uh, he was one of my professors. Uh, he had actually been a, a judge in Alaska when it was still a territory. So he was an older guy by the time he was my professor. Uh, the capital of Alaska is a town called Juneau. Uh, probably the most well-known uh, town or city in Alaska is Anchorage. Anchorage is the most populous uh, city in uh, in. Alaska, but Juneau is the state capital. Uh, interesting thing about Juneau, it's the only state capital that you can't get to uh, by driving. <clears throat> um, Juneau is kind of weird that way. Uh, <clears throat> the population of Alaska is 736,081. I'm not sure when this uh, was done, but uh, basically kind of if you if you uh, want to um, have a picture of the population density and stuff um, if the population of the state of New York was the same as the population density of Alaska it would mean that there were 26 people living on the island of Manhattan so there's not a there, there's a huge amount of state uh, Alaska is the largest state uh, in in the United States, but it's one of the um, the lowest population um, density density wise, lowest population, um, just because it's so vast. Uh, it's um, six hundred and sixty three thousand two hundred and eighty two hundred and sixty eight um, square miles, which is 1,717,856 kilometers squared. Um, and there just isn't a lot of, um, uh, just isn't a lot of people in that amount of, of land. Um, <clears throat> if you compare Alaska against the other states, um, the second largest state in the United States is Texas. And um, 
if I remember correctly, Alaska is at least twice as big as Texas, at least. Um, and uh, Alaska is also bigger than the next three largest states combined. So it, it's quite large. It, it almost... Um, I'm trying to. A lot of times, uh, when you look at a map of a uh, of the United States with Alaska there, um, because of the way they portray maps and stuff, Alaska looks a lot smaller. But actually, it's almost the size of the western half of the United States. It's that big. Um, yeah. So, like I said, it, we purchased it from the Russians. Uh, it was originally called Seward's Folly. Uh, now there actually is a is a holiday in Alaska where they celebrate Seward because of basically what what um, came to be seen as his contribution to to the United States and things. Um, okay, so some more facts about Alaska. This is exactly what you wanted, right? Um, Alaska is on what's called the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is is uh, the countries uh, that surround the Pacific Ocean. So it stretches from uh, the southern tip of South America up through the United States, Canada, across to Russia, down um, through Japan, uh, into the... Um, <clears throat> into Indonesia and there and around um, Australia out into New Zealand and stuff. It's called um, <clears throat> the Ring of Fire because it's so tectonically active, uh, geologically active. Some One of those words. Um, there are a lot of earthquakes and a lot of um, volcanoes. Uh, <clears throat> Hawaii is there in the ring of fire as well. It's kind of this little, I think they try to put it here. It's like this little dot way out here in the, in the, in the uh, Pacific ocean. Um, and uh, Hawaii is, is famed for its volcanoes, but Alaska actually has more volcanoes than any other place in the United States. Um, <clears throat> so it has, Let's see. It has more than 100 volcanoes and volcanic fields. Um, and just because it's so big, it just contains more. More of just everything. So, yeah, most glaciers in the United States. Uh, it has the two largest forests in the United States. It has the most coastline of the United States. And that's <clears throat> um, continental United States. <clears throat> plus um, Hawaii. It's the United States borders both the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, and Alaska still has more coastline than the rest of the United the rest of the United States. So it has more than thirty four thousand miles of coastline. It's it's immense. Um, Florida uh, is the second most uh, coastline. And it has 8,436. I mean, it's just huge, just massive. Um, and it's, like I said, it's the largest state in the United States as well. <clears throat> so in winter, uh, I have been to Alaska. It's one of the one of the few states. I wish I could say that I've been to all 50 states. I haven't. But Alaska is one of the few states that I have been to. Um, in And I've... I've been there twice. I was one, there once in August and once there again in, in March. Um, August, obviously, summer um, and March at the time, it was still winter in Alaska. It hadn't hit spring yet. Um, and anyway, winter, the average temperature is around one degree Fahrenheit or negative 17 Celsius. The average low and one degree is the average high. That's the warmest. The average low is around negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around negative 27 Celsius. In the summer, it fluctuates fluctuates and stays pretty constant between 50 uh, 
or 50 as the low and 60 as the high, which is between 10 and 15 Celsius. Uh, when I was in Alaska um, for the summer, it was kind of interesting because they had a heat wave and it was 88 degrees, um, which is pretty warm. The thing is, is that uh, we were getting kind of uh, warm in the house that I was staying in and they had no air conditioning. They just didn't need it. Um, very rarely did Alaska get to the point where in the summer it was uh, unbearable. Um, it just didn't happen. So anyway, lowest recorded temperature in the United States came from Alaska and it was negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 62 Celsius. Um, and the highest temperature, this is not highest temperature in the United States, that's reserved for a different state, which we'll get to. Uh, but the highest temperature seen in Alaska was 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or around 37 degrees Celsius. And the thing was, is that that was um, seen, let's see, <clears throat> oh, whoops, I made a, a mistake on the population density. So if Manhattan in New York had the same population density as Alaska, that would mean that there were 16 people living on the island. So let me correct that. Um, let's see, where's the... Ah, the it was the 100 degree weather was recorded in Fort Yukon uh, and it was uh, in 1915. So, yeah. And the, the lowest temperature was at Prospect Creek Camp in 1971. So, yeah, there we go. Um, <clears throat> what kind of brought people to Alaska? Uh, obviously, there were native tribes already living in the area. Um, and they were very much a subsistence kind of living, um, somewhat transitory in, in their... Um, there weren't a lot of permanent settlements. Um, people would go from... Uh, you know, like summer lodgings to winter lodgings, and they would uh, forage as as they could, uh, living off of a lot of the bounty of the ocean and things like that. Uh, but in, in 1897, gold was discovered in Alaska. And this was kind of the turning point in, uh, in the Seward's Folly thing, where people started thinking, oh, Alaska has something to offer us. So uh, a lot of people left wherever they were and and went to um, uh, Alaska. This was very much like the gold rush in 1849 <clears throat> that brought a lot of people out to California. So in 1897, like I said, gold was discovered. Since then, um, people still go and mine for gold in Alaska. <clears throat> There's a show called Gold Rush, I want to say, um, that's all about people um, mining and panning for gold up in Alaska. Uh, like I said, they do it to this day. Uh, but there's a lot of actually, uh, uh, there are actually quite a few natural resources that ha are coming out of Alaska now. We have seafood, um, oil fields, and uh, minerals. Zinc being the biggest export in minerals that comes from, from Alaska. So um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that if... Uh, gold hadn't been found in Alaska. <clears throat> um, there are reasons for people to go to Alaska, and, and we'll get to some of that in just a minute. But um, if we hadn't found gold, um, Alaska probably would be one of those places that still, to this day, doesn't have a lot of, of um, population. Um, a lot less than it does now. But because of the oil um, and the the fishing, the seafood resources that we get from Alaska, there's still quite a, uh, a large population up there that relies on those particular industries for their livelihood. <clears throat> so if you are going to Alaska, uh, here are some of the things that you can do in Alaska. Camping, hunting, fishing. I put flying on here. It's kind of interesting. Um, the... Uh, um, the largest salmon uh, caught was uh, from Alaska. Um, it was in the Kenai River. It weighed 97 pounds and 4 ounces. Just insane. Uh, I know that people go hunting and they'll, they'll sometimes hunt bear, which can weigh... They, they will 
usually go hunting for Kodiak. They don't do polar bears, as far as I know. Polar bears are endangered, so they don't do those anymore. But uh, the Kodiak bears <clears throat> weigh around uh, 1,500 pounds. They can be 10 feet tall when they're standing upright. Uh, and then there's moose, uh, deer, elk, and all that other caribou, all those others. But moose are the big ones. They can they can outweigh those Kodiak bears that I just talked about, you know, 1,600 pounds. And their antlers are like six feet wide and wider. I mean, just enormous animals. <clears throat> um, there, there was a Mythbusters uh, where they were um, doing some uh, running cars into fake moose to kind of um, see if see what kind of damage a moose would do to a car. Boy, yeah, you just yeah. And <clears throat> I know some people who are from Alaska, and it's kind of funny they they had this. Um, uh, fence around their yard and um, it was a tall fence you know six feet tall uh, but it didn't keep out the moose uh, the uh, the um, they used to complain that the moose would always come in and eat all their vegetables in their garden they'd grow a garden and they almost never harvested anything because the the moose would just step over their fence go and just devour everything in the garden so <clears throat> giant animals giant animals so there we go we've got the camping and the hunting and the fishing but alaska has um the largest and busiest seaplane base in the world it's lake hood in in anchorage it has the most and the most seaplanes coming in and out um but it also has 10,378 active pilots. Now, this list may be a little bit old. There may be um, more or less than that at this point. But, but um, more than 1% of the state's population has some level of flying certification, which means that this is 3.6 times higher than the U.S. average. Um, it has four times the number of airports per square mile uh, than anywhere in the U S. Um, and just the, the thing is, is that when you go out to Alaska to, to go hunting, to go fishing, to go camping, a lot of times in order to get where you want to go, you have to hire a plane to get you there. So, uh, there's just so many people. I actually have a neighbor right now who, um, he works here, uh, during the year, but in the summer, he and his family go up to Alaska because he's a pilot and he does, <clears throat> he that's what he does for for three months out of the year is he goes up to alaska he goes hunting fishing camping um and makes a ton of money off of flying people to and from their destinations and he gets to do it in alaska so um there's quite a bit of that going on um up there and so they just need a lot of pilots so flying is one of the things to do in alaska <laughs> Now, a uh, little. Let's go back a little bit to some more crazy facts about Alaska. Uh, Alaska was the site of the Battle of Atu. Uh, World War II. It was the only battle fought on American soil in the entire uh, in the entirety of, of World War II. Um, so yeah, it lasted between May 11th to May 30th. Let's see, where was that? Yeah, so uh, Japanese invaded the Aleutian Islands uh, and uh, we had a battle, kind of interesting. Obviously there were other skirmishes and things, but that's just considered, considered the only battle that was fought on American soil during World War II. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, Right, wind up these last few facts that I think are really interesting, and that'll be it for Alaska. Please, if you have any questions about Alaska, like and subscribe as always, and let me know down in the comments. And I, actually, there there may be a couple other things. Anyway, so the story behind the Alaskan state flag, I I feel is is really interesting. Um, <clears throat> the governor of the territory of Alaska, um, he was working to have Alaska recognized as a state. And he was 
in the in Washington D.C. and he saw the 48 flags of the 48 states, and he thought, you know what, we need to have a state flag or a territory flag, something like that. Uh, they needed an Alaskan flag, and so he, uh, when he got home, he um, persuaded the Alaska American Legion to hold a contest that was open to all Alaskan children in uh, grades 7 through 12 to design a state flag. Um, <clears throat> the winner was Benny Benson. Benny Benson was um, 13? Seven, he was a 7th grader um, at the time, and he was in a territorial sc uh, school in a town called Seward, named after Seward, who you know, bought the United States from, from Russia. Um, and uh, this is the flag that he designed. Uh, it's a blue flag with the Big Dipper and the Northern Star. The Northern Star is obviously the big star in the upper corner. Um, and it was chosen unanimously. Uh, all, all, of the, uh, um, all of the judges on the panel just, this is, this is the state flag. Um, it's a <clears throat> eight stars to represent the Big Dipper <clears throat> on a blue, blue background to represent the sky and forget-me-nots. And then it had the um, the North Star up in the corner, um, and it's been their flag ever since. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to, to, as far as state sports go, was uh, is dog mushing. And um, if you haven't heard of it, uh, back in the I said back in the day, uh, they still do it now. They. Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race is run every year, um, and uh, basically they get teams of dogs and they hitch them to a sled, and they and that's dog mushing. Uh, mush, as I as I uh, recall, is a uh, oh, what's the word for it? Basically, it comes from the French for go um, or, um, but not. Andale. No, that's Spanish. Ale. Ale, ale. Um, it's uh, from their word for March. Uh, anyway, so that is their state sport. Um, like I said earlier, I have been to Alaska twice. I once went in the summer, and I once went again in the winter, and it was very different both times. In the summer, the, the being outside was really nice, but it was really hard to tell what time it was. Um, I would look outside and I would think, okay, the sky is about this dark. That should, you know, makes it about eight o'clock, eight thirty ish, and that's what I was used to from back from back where I was from. And then we'd get out because it was like one of those things where you don't want to like be checking your watch and making people uncomfortable, thinking, oh, this guy is bored. He wants to get out of here. It was just kind of like you glance outside to kind of get an, an idea of of what the time was. And then we'd get outside and I'd look at my watch and holy cow, it's like 1130 at night. Shouldn't be this light outside. And then again, I went in the, in the winter and again, it's, it throws you off. The sun, sun starts setting at like three in the afternoon. It's like, it shouldn't be start setting until around five, five thirty ish. And so the other thing is that there was so much snow on the ground. Um, we went to the zoo to the Anchorage Zoo, and the Anchorage Zoo has one animal that is not adapted to the cold. They have an, an elephant. The rest of the, the animals in the Anchorage Zoo, they're either native to Alaska or they had a Siberian tiger. Now, if you know anything about Russia, Siberia is famed for being cold, so the Siberian tiger didn't care. It was already used to that kind of climate. So the Siberian tiger being what it was, it was perfectly adapted to living there in the, in the Anchorage Zoo. But we were, we were walking around with my niece and we were pulling her around in a sled. And this guy came up to us and he said, I want to take a picture of you because I want to show the, the people back home in Florida, how you go to the zoo in Alaska. So we let him take a picture of, of my niece sitting in the sled as we were pulling around the, the zoo. Um, but yeah, it was really, I mean, they don't plow the roads there. The thing is, is that there's just so much snow that it doesn't make sense to plow the roads. People just put on snow tires with metal studs and you just leave them on. Uh, there's a, there's kind of a day 
designated when you go to the tire store and they put on your winter tires. Obviously, you brought the tires with you. They they swap them out, and then later, as the snow starts melting, you swap them back. But uh, they they were just really used to driving around on on the roads and things, and it just didn't matter because everybody did the same thing, and they they were like here as soon as it snows the snow plows go out and the roads are pretty clear pretty quickly uh but there it's just like we we get so much snow we just can't keep up with it so we're just not going to we're just going to deal with it as it is um <clears throat> so a couple interesting anecdotes uh, about uh, my time in alaska uh, and uh, if again like and subscribe as always comment down below uh, let me know your questions about specific states in the united states if i don't know the answer i'll definitely look it up and let you know uh, and see you next time